Welcome back. You are, bidding, you are viewing video two of eight in the Braille Sense Polaris Beginners Bootcamp series. In this video, we will be going over um, the description of the physical device itself, some basic commands, as well as some extras. The next three flips, the next three slides contain photos of the Braille Sense Polaris and have labels that describe each key or part of the Braille Sense Polaris. We will be talking about these parts in more detail in the next upcoming slide. Let's take a look at the Polaris and get to know the keys, buttons, three position slide switches, and more. To get the videos, please have a Polaris in front of you and feel free to pause and practice as needed. As I talk through these points in the video, please know that I have a BrailleSense Polaris in front of me and as I'm talking about things, I will be pointing to them on the BrailleSense Polaris. We are going to start from the top panel of the device and work our way down. At the top of the panel, in the middle of the device, you will find the LCD screen. This can be easily turned on and off. We will talk more about that later. To the left and to the right of the LCD screen, you will find four indicator lights. These indicator lights each indicate something different. On the far left is the power indicator. Next to that is the GPS status indicator. And then when we move to the right of the LCD screen, we will find the Wi-Fi indicator and the Bluetooth indicator. Let's take a pause and find each of these on your Polaris. Moving on. Now we're going to move down to the center of the device. Here, you are going to find the Perkins keys just as you would on a Perkins Braille Writer. In addition to the same keys that you would find on a Perkins Braille Writer, you're gonna find a few extras. To the left of the space bar, you are going to find the control key. On the right, you're going to find the alt key. These keys are important. They are going to allow you to write in documents, manipulate your device, use shortcuts, and work quickly within your Polaris. In addition to those keys, you are also going to find function keys number one through four. These keys are on the outsides of your control and alt keys. So starting on the left of the Polaris, we have function number one, number two, and then moving to the right of your alt key, you're gonna find function key number three and four. Let's take another pause and find these buttons on your own. Continuing to move down, you are going to find the refreshable Braille display. This display has 32 cells. Above the cells are cursor routing buttons. You can use these to move your cursor to the appropriate spot in your document when you're writing a paper or taking a note. To the left of your refreshable braille ski, excuse me, your refreshable braille display, you are going to find two sets of scroll keys that have little like oval buttons and you can push them up or down. You can use these to help you move through menus and documents. Please take a moment to explore these keys. Next, we're going to move on to the front panel. Now, starting from the far left, you're going to find the following switches and buttons. First, we have our first three position slide switch. This goes between three different positions. On the far left, we're gonna have lock, in the middle, audio, and then unlock. Moving down, you're going to find a second slide switch and this one moves between apps, 
DAISY, and MP3s. And those are your different media modes that you can use on the Brillstones Polaris. Moving on, you're going to find a set of five buttons. They are all going to feel the same, except the button in the middle. And that's going to have a raised dot on the center of it. These buttons are for controlling media and DAISY playback. And they also are going to provide some keyboard shortcuts for you. This is only when it's in the application mode though. So keep that in mind. It, but we'll talk about that more later. These keys in order from left to right are back, record, stop. And remember stop is a key that has a raised dot. To the right of stop, we have a play pause button. And then finally a forward button. The very last button on our front panel is the power on and off button. When you press it on, your Polaris will turn on or off. Sometimes you just need to give it a minute. Right now mine is, is thinking and the Braille display when it turns on will say hymns and then you'll hear like a little song. Let's pause for a moment and practice finding the keys on the front panel. Now let's move on to the bottom face. This is where your battery and camera are located. Now, please note that as I've been describing the physical aspects of this device, I have not had a case on my device. This is so I can show you different parts of it. Oh, there's a little jingle letting me know that my device is turned on. So I can easily show you parts of it that are covered up when the case is on. Um, and the two parts of that, that are, or the part that is covered up is the battery. Now, this is a very expensive unit. It's, and it's important to always have a case on it unless you're cleaning it or taking the battery out. Now, when you go to take the battery out, it's really flat and you may just find the, um, there's like a rectangle outline that's a little bit hard to feel. But to take it out, you're going to find a small rectangle that has a um, little groove in it. To take the battery out, you're gonna pull that back and then there's going to be a small indent just beneath it that will allow you to take the battery out. To put the battery back in, you're going to put in um, the right side first and then the left and then you'll snap, oops, I have it up. I have it turned around and then it will snap into place. So you wanna start with the right side first and the left side. I turned the device around to show this again. So the groove with the dip, that should be on your left side when you go to take it out. Additionally, I wanted to show you the camera that's on the back of your device. Your camera here has 13 me megapixels, so it can take a pretty nice picture. You are going to find this, um, on the, depending on which way your device is oriented to you. If your media buttons are, can, if you can feel them on the bottom, your camera is going to be located on the upper left hand of your device, and it's going to feel like a very smooth square. Take a moment to practice taking your battery in and out and finding your camera. Next, we're going to talk about the rear panel. The port to the right of the near panel. Oh, excuse me. Got to turn around here. So the port to the right near the real rear panel is your AC adapter jack. This is going to be where you will plug your charging cord in to char charge your device to make sure it has power. You're going to plug in the small round end of your AC adapter into this jack and then you're going to take the larger box like end and plug that into a standard electrical outlet. Towards the left, we're going to move on down and you're going to find the HDMI port. 
We are going to use this port to connect HDMI video screens or monitors to the BrailleSense Polaris for visual presentation or if your teacher wants to view your work as a student. Let's pause and find our AC adapter jack and our HDMI port. Next, we are going to move on and take a look at our right panel. Towards the front of the right panel is going to be your USB 3.0 rapid data and micro USB combination port. This can be used for transferring data, charging the unit, and connecting to a computer as a USB braille display. As we continue to the back of the unit, you're going to find an SD slot, and this is for using, um, this is for, for inserting an SD card. Take a moment and find the HDMI port in the SD slot used for holding SD cards. Next, we're going to move on to the left panel. Now, near the front of the unit, you're going to find two small oval buttons. These are for raising and lowering the master volume of the unit. Use the button closest to you to the or closest to the front to decrease the volume and the button behind it to increase it. Behind those two buttons are two small round jacks. The one nearest to the front is the stereo headphone jack. So that is something that you could plug in your headphones to. And then the one furthest from the unit is a stereo microphone jack for connecting a microphone or a line level recording source. Then near the back of the left panel is a USB host port. This is used to connect USB drives, keyboards, and other compatible accessories. Again, Let's pause for a moment and practice finding these different ports and buttons. Next, we're going to cover some basic commands, including voice settings, and we're also going to talk about how to turn your LCD screen on and off. Let's, let's talk basic commands. These are going to be commands that allow you to do some simple things on your device. These commands are also displayed on the video as well as in the user's manual and tips and, tip, tips and tricks document. We're going to go through a few of these just one by one. And just like before, there will be time to practice. So the first thing we're going to talk about is voice settings. Voice settings include increasing or decreasing the volume, increasing or decreasing the voice rate, which is how fast or how slow you want the voice of your Polaris to speak. And then we're going to talk about the pitch, which is like how high or how low you want the voice to sound. So there's actually two different ways that you can increase and decrease the volume. The first way you might remember from when we were doing the actual device orientation. On the left side of the BrailleSense Polaris, on the bottom left, you're gonna find these two like oval shaped buttons. The button on the bottom is going to lower the volume. I'm going to press it right now. Main volume 20, main volume 19. And then the button on top is going to increase the volume. Main volume 20, main volume 21. Main volume 20, main volume 21. Another way to increase the main volume is to hit backspace plus F4. To press backspace plus space and F4. Main volume 21, main volume 21. Now to decrease the main volume, you're going to hit backspace, space, and F1. Now you give it a try. Next, we're going to increase the voice rate. To increase it, we're going to press space plus F4. Voice rate 5, voice rate 6, voice rate 7. And then to decrease, we're going to press 
space plus F1. Voice rate six, voice rate five, voice rate four, voice rate three. Now you give it a try. Next, we're going to talk about increasing the pitch, and that's going to be enter plus F4. Voice volume five. Oh, excuse me, I hit the wrong button. Enter plus F4. Voice pitch four. Voice pitch five. Voice pitch six. And then to decrease the voice pitch, we're going to hit enter and F1. Voice pitch five. Voice pitch four. Now, as you guys just saw, I made a, I just had a little mix up with the buttons there. And I just want you to know that it's okay to make mistakes. And especially when you're learning a or device or even when you use it a lot, sometimes you mix things up and it's not a big deal. It's usually pretty easy to figure out um, the error that you've made. So now take a few moments and I want you to practice again, increasing, increasing and decreasing the voice pitch. And then I want you to go back and try increasing and de decreasing the volume as well as the voice rate. You can pause until you feel like you're ready to move on. All right, do you remember a few minutes ago when I mentioned the LCD screen um, in, in the top center of the device and I said we were gonna come back to that? Well, now we're back. So the purpose of this screen is um, it displays print of like what you're writing or what app or what menu that you're in. And this can be helpful for um, someone who's working with you and if they have vision and they might wanna see what you're doing. Now, to turn this on and off, it's really simple. There's three different settings. On, on with the backlight and off. To do this, we're simply just, just going to hit enter plus four, five, six. LCD on, file manager, F. As you can hear, LCD is on. I'm going to increase the volume a bit. Main volume 21. Now we're gonna turn the backlight on, which again, we're going to hit enter, four, five, six. LCD on with backlight. And then we're file going- File manager, F. And then we're going to turn it back off. LCD off. File manager F. Next, we're going to continue on with some more basic commands. All right, this next set of commands are going to assist you as you multi multitask on your Polaris, as well as go to open menu items and applications. We will continue to pause um, after each little set of commands so you have a chance to practice. The first thing I wanna talk about is returning to the file manager slash main menu. To do that, you're going to hit F1. File manager, F. Now, if you're already in the file manager and you hit F1, you will not hear it repeat the name of the menu. But if you check your refreshable braille display, it will say, what menu you're in, and if you have your LCD screen on, it will also um, say that there as well. Um, I find sometimes if, especially when um, a student is just learning um, a note taker, like I consider the file manager like home base. And so if you're feeling stuck or if you're not sure where you are in the device, go ahead, do an F1, go back to your file manager and start fresh from there. Now, when you're in your file manager and your main menu, um, you're gonna have an opportunity to find like a list of applications. And these different applications are going to help you to do different things on your Polaris. So to listen to what applications and items you have, you can do that in a couple different ways. First, you can use your scroll keys. Notepad, N. Word processor, W. Notepad, N. And so I'm just using the up and down buttons on my scroll keys to go through this list. Another way you can do it is you can move up and down by doing space dot four or space dot one. Dot four is gonna move you down. Email, E. 
exchange email at media and and space that one that's going to move you up exchange email l email e now it's worth noting that if you want to open one of these menu items just go ahead and hit your enter key account name no items list item file manager f so it's pretty simple. So if you want to, as you're scrolling through, if you want to open up a couple of the different applications and and um, and check them out, go ahead and do that. Just hit go ahead and hit the enter key to open them. Finally, if you want to move to the end of the list or to the top of the list, there's a command for that. A space four five six will take you to the bottom. Information about the Braille Sense Polaris. And the space one two three will take you to the top. File Manager, F. So take this time and explore those commands for moving through your list of applications. And be sure to open a couple of the programs or applications as you're doing this. Next, we're going to talk about how to open your running tasks list. So your tasks list is going to be the list of like tasks or applications that you have open. And to do this, to list these out, you're going to do an F1 and an F4. Task name, note F1 for list item. And so this tells me one of four it says that I have four tasks open and I can go through and. Task name, email to four list item. I can just Task scroll name, through. Word processor three for list item. And I can even hit enter. Blank. And it's going to open up the um, tasks that I entered on and put me right back in it. So now I'm going to go back to our main menu. File Manager F. Now, um, this is a very similar command, but different. Um, and this is going to be switching to your previous task. And what this is going to allow you to do is move easily back and forth between different applications that you're using. Um, one example of this may be is let's say you're doing a book report and you're using word, your word processor and you're using the Bookshare app. So by hitting um, F2 and F3, it allows you to switch between your open apps and work quickly between them. So I'm going to hit F2 and F3. Task name, notepad. Task name, email. Account name, task name, word processor. And as, as you can see, it quickly moves me back and forth between different tasks that I have open. And then again, if you want to go into a task, and, well, and actually it already puts you into the task. So right now I'm in my word processor and I can already start writing. I'm going to say uh, that. That is, that is good. Good period. So I'm already in my word processor and I can go in and write in it right away. All right. So while we're in our word processor, um, and I'm touching on this because when we really get into word processing, we'll touch on these menus more. But um, when you're in different programs or applications, they're going to have a menu. And to open that menu and to get into the different features of those programs, you're going to want to do a space M for menu or an F2. So I'm just going to go ahead and press F2. File, F, pull down menu. And then I can easily use my scroll keys. Edit, E, pull, insert, I, pull down menu. And go through the different menus. Now, let's go ahead, take a moment to, um, open a menu in one of our programs. Great. The last thing we're going to touch on is exiting and escape. So I'm going to do more talking than I am showing you with this and you can practice this on your own. But the biggest thing aside from knowing what those commands are is to know the difference between escaping a program or and exiting a program. Now, escape, or I'm going to back up. Exit is going to close a program for you. So say you're done working in something, you can go ahead, do a space Z, and it's going to close that program for you. Escape allows you to exit things like menus, dialog boxes, or prompt boxes. And it also is going to serve as your back button um, when you're in like native Android apps. And escape is it is a space e so again 
exit closes programs, escape gets you out of menus, dialog boxes, etc. So go ahead and um, within some of your, while you've been exploring your program menus, go ahead, escape from some of those, and then go ahead and close the program. All right, finally, we are going to go through some extras, such as saying the current time, displaying your power status, displaying your network status, turning your voice on and off, as well as turning the Braille on and off. Let's talk some extras. While this portion of the video is titled extras, these are very important commands that will help you use your Polaris to its full potential. Again, in the previous segments, we will pause after each command for practice opportunity. The first extra we're going to go over is how to have your BrailleSense Polaris say the current date and time. You will notice as we go through and learn more and more commands for the Polaris that they're actually quite intuitive um, much of the time. For example, the command to say the time and date is space T. So for me, I remember T for time and that helps me remember the command. So we're gonna go ahead and do a space T here. Sorry about that, I had to wake my Polaris up. All right, now let's go ahead and do a space T for time. 12, 28, 23 p.m. static box. So as you can see here, it's announced the time. And to have it announce the date, we're going to use the tab button, which is F3, to hear the date. Monday, January 11th, 2021 static box. Let's pause a moment and give that a try. Great. Now we're going to move on to how you display your power status. File manager, F. I just hit F1 to go back to my main menu. The power status is important because you need to know how much battery life your Polaris has. This is going to help you with time management. Say you have a big paper to write and you're at 13%. You might want to plug it in to ensure that you're able to use the device for a long period of time. To check the power status, we're going to do a space one six. 96 charged using battery static box. Let's go ahead and give that a try. Great. File manager F. The next command we're going to talk about is how to display your network status. Now this is important because your network status is going to be the wireless network that you are attached to. You will notice when we practice this command that it will display not only if you are online, but we can learn information like what wireless connect, what wireless you're connected to and more. To display our network status, we're gonna do a space N from our main menu. And to make sure that you're in your main menu, you're gonna hit an F1 and it should say file manager. And then you know that you're back to your main menu. So let's do a space N. Check in. Status, online, wireless, static box. Now using my scroll key, I'm gonna move down and listen to what other information it has to tell me about my network status. SSID, Flowdy static box. This is the wireless network that I'm a part of. Sensitivity, very good static box. This is telling me what kind of signal I have. IP, 192.168. WAMP network prefix length 24, 255, 255, to gateway 192, primary DNS 192, 168, 1, 1 static file manager F. I didn't escape to get out of there, but as you can see, as I hit my scroll keys, gave me more and more detailed information about my network, which again, very important when you're using a device that depends a lot on being connected to the wireless internet. Finally, these last two commands, oh, excuse me, let's pause and practice checking our network status. All right, now finally, these last two commands, as you can tell, I got a little excited about them. Um, there, It's going to show us how to turn our voice on and off, as well as our braille display on and off. I frequently over the years have noticed that 
Um, many tech problems or frustrations that have come up have been the voice gets turned off or the braille gets turned off and then a student you're not able to access your your device and that's super frustrating because you are not able to interact with it so checking to make sure that the voice is on and the braille is on are super super important so to turn the voice on and off we're going to do a backspace f2 voice off. and then to turn it on we'll just press those again backspace f2 voice on file manager f and then finally to turn the braille on and off we're going to do another backspace again but with f3 braille off file manager f braille on file manager f great why don't you take a moment and practice those two commands all right Let's take a moment to wrap up the end of video number two of eight in our Braille Sense Polaris series. Uh, the final point I would like to share with you all is um, now that we've been working on our device for um, about a good half an hour, we want to make sure that if you're going to take a break from it or um, turn it off, that we know how to turn it off. And to do that, you simply press your power key that's located on the lower right side of your Polaris and it's going to give you a prompt and ask you do you for sure want to turn your Polaris off and you can type a Y for a yes and it will prompt you through. Uh, finally, uh, sometimes also too if you don't turn your device off it'll go to sleep and if you just um, press that power button briefly it will wake it back up. Second, we covered a lot in this video, um, in the second video. There's a lot of that, those good important skills that we need to have before we really get into using our Polaris. I would like to encourage you if this is your first time watching this video, um, you know, and as you go through future videos, take breaks, but practice consistently. It's totally fine to um, maybe go through one or two parts of a video and then just take a break or maybe you're feeling super confident with your skills and you want to move quickly. The goal of this series is for you to move at your own pace. Finally, all of the commands that are mentioned um, in this video series, you can find in the Polaris manual, which is linked, as well as the Polaris tips and tricks slide deck. And if you follow the slide deck, it will go in order of this series so you can easily um, follow along with the different commands. The next video on the series is going to cover basic word processing. Thank you for joining us.